Desperation. It's a potent word, isn't it? It drips with urgency, like a heartbeat pounding in your chest during a storm. It's that knot in your stomach, the whisper in your ear that says, don't let go. Today, we're diving deep into this feeling. We're going to explore the world of the anxiously attached, a world filled with longing, fear, and a relentless search for security. You see, if you find yourself constantly questioning, do they love me? Are they going to leave me? Then you, my dear friend, may be trapped in the invisible chains of an anxious attachment style. Ah, anxious attachment. What a fascinating, tragic dance it is. The anxious partner is the one who loves too much, who gives too freely, like a bird feeding its own heart to a hungry predator, hoping that the sacrifice will make it stay. You think if you just love hard enough, if you just prove yourself, they'll never leave you. But the irony, the harder you cling, the more they pull away. It's a cruel, ironic twist, like trying to hold water in your hands. The tighter your grip, the faster it slips through your fingers. Let me tell you a story. Imagine a small child reaching up for their mother's hand in a crowded market. The child is terrified of getting lost, of being left behind. When the mother's hand slips away, the child doesn't just walk calmly along. No, they panic, they scream, they search frantically through the sea of strangers, convinced that they've been abandoned. That's what it feels like to be anxiously attached as an adult. Every time your partner steps back, you don't just see space. You see abandonment. You feel that same primal fear, the same dread that you are about to be left behind. But why? Why do we become this way? Well, attachment theory tells us that it often begins in childhood. Picture this. A young boy with a mother who is loving one day and distant the next. One moment she's showering him with affection, and the next, she's cold, unreachable. The child doesn't know what to expect, so he learns to cling tightly to her when she's near, and when she's distant, he waits in fear, anticipating her next move. He grows up believing that love is inconsistent, that affection must be chased, earned, fought for, and when he becomes an adult, this pattern doesn't disappear. It becomes his blueprint for relationships. Now, you might say, but I'm not that child anymore. I'm an adult. I shouldn't feel this way. Ah, but here's the twist. The anxious attachment style is like an old wound, never fully healed. It may scab over, but the slightest touch can reopen it. And in your romantic relationships, every moment of silence, every unanswered text is like salt on that wound. It takes you back to that child in the market, lost, searching, desperate for a hand to hold. Let's be clear about something. Being anxiously attached is not about weakness. No, it's about having a heart that feels too deeply. You are the person who loves with all they have, who sees the potential for connection everywhere. You are the poet who writes verses in the margins of your mind. The dreamer who imagines a love so complete that it drowns out the noise of the world. But this sensitivity, this ability to love so intensely, it's a double-edged sword. It makes you generous, kind, empathetic, yes. But it also makes you vulnerable, exposed, and easily hurt. Think of it like this. Your heart is an open window, welcoming the breeze, but also letting in the storm. When you sense even the slightest chill from your partner, you shiver. You wonder if winter is coming, if they're pulling away, if you're about to be left out in the cold. You start to question everything. Did I say something wrong? Did I do something to push them away? Your mind becomes a courtroom, and you are both the defendant and the prosecutor, accusing yourself of crimes you never committed. And here lies the great irony. In your attempt to seek closeness, you often push people away. You see, when you're anxiously attached, you tend to become overly focused on the relationship. You crave reassurance like a parched man craves water in the desert. You ask for more. You need more. You want to be held tighter, closer, 
more frequently. But to your partner, this neediness can feel like a tidal wave. They may start to feel smothered, overwhelmed, and instead of drawing closer, they step back. They need air. They need space. And that, of course, sends you into a spiral of panic. The very thing you feared, rejection, abandonment, seems to be coming true, not because of anything they've done, but because of the fear that's been simmering in your own mind all along. Imagine a bird caught in a cage, frantically beating its wings against the bars, believing that the harder it fights, the quicker it will escape. But in its panic, it only hurts itself more, bruising its delicate feathers, exhausting itself. You, my dear friend, are that bird. You believe that if you just try harder, if you just show more love, you'll be free from your anxiety. But in truth, the cage isn't around you. It's inside you. The key isn't to beat against the bars, but to sit still, to breathe and realize that the door has been open all along. What if I told you that you don't have to live like this? What if I told you that the solution isn't to chase harder, but to turn inward, to soothe the child within who still believes that love is something you must beg for? This is the real work of healing an anxious attachment style, learning to give yourself the very thing you've been begging from others, reassurance, security, love. I once met a woman, let's call her Eleanor. Eleanor was the quintessential anxious partner, always on edge always seeking reassurance from her boyfriend. Every time he took a few hours to respond to her messages, she felt her world begin to crumble. She'd send another text, then another, her anxiety growing with each passing minute. Her boyfriend, a kind but independent man, felt overwhelmed. He loved her, but he didn't know how to comfort her without losing himself. One day, Eleanor came to me, exhausted, her eyes red from crying. I just don't want to feel this way anymore, she said. And in that moment, I saw it. The turning point. I told her, you're chasing something that only you can give yourself. The reassurance you seek isn't from him. It's from you. You need to tell yourself that you are safe, that you are enough, that you will be okay, even if he doesn't respond right away. She looked at me, and I could see the wheels turning, the realization dawning. It wasn't an easy journey for her, but she began to practice self-soothing. She'd take a deep breath before sending a second text. She'd tell herself, I am loved, I am secure, I am enough, even when she didn't fully believe it yet. And over time, she found her peace. The anxiety that once felt like a roaring fire became a quiet ember, manageable, almost comforting in its familiarity. So, I ask you, are you trapped in anxious attachment style? Are you the bird beating its wings, the child lost in the market? If so, remember this. The only person who can truly set you free is you. It starts with a simple yet profound act, self-compassion. It starts with looking in the mirror and saying, I am enough even when every fiber of your being wants to seek that validation from someone else. Because the truth is, the love you've been searching for, the reassurance you've been craving, has been with you all along. It's time to stop chasing shadows and start embracing the light within yourself. And when you do that, when you finally unlock the cage of your own making, you'll find that you've been free all along.